I thought I was out. I thought I was done with this video. I thought a check mark made me invincible, but then here I am, much like invincible, getting slapped around by the phantom ghost of Mama Susan. Two hours after release, Mama Susan age gates my video, then goes, Remaster that video and make it lame. And I went, Please, no, I have a check mark. And she said, You're taking those man cheeks out for the China cut. So without further ado, this is the China friendly cut. Don't worry, you'll barely notice the difference. Pimps, this has been the greatest year ever in gaming. 2005? Resident Evil 4? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly, boy. Resident Evil 4 just came out this year. Think of all the horse armor we've bought, the games we've watched, the bears we've made passionate sweet love to, the jawlines we've sharpened. She chews her food all the way. I thought it couldn't get any better than Saints Row's triumphant character designs, but the industry keeps maturing. Gollum. And don't think that this is all coming out now because I'm a newly minted member of the global elite. I would never think a, a silly check mark makes me superior to the filth. I mean, wonderful non-verified critics out there, but with that being said, I have a check mark. Things are different now. For a second there, my social credit score dropped because Cobblepot started giving out check marks to all the peasants. Don't worry about how I got mine. But now I'm back on top, and here are my picks in this year's Triumph Awards that prove this year has been the greatest year ever in gaming. Let's start with the best ongoing game. You know gaming's never been better when we are handing billion dollar companies awards for fixing their fuck-ups, and that's why this award is going to Final Fantasy 14. Triumphant job, Big Yosh. Next up, best multiplayer game. Now this really comes down to two choices. Baldur's Gate 3, because I guess you can tag team the bear, that's news to me. And Diablo 4, obviously for the local co-op features between you and your bank account. And if we're being honest, let's just stop the count right there. You guys know how much I love Diablo 4. I mean, it's uh, Street Fighter 6 wins. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Following that, best art direction. Although I found Bait and Switch's visuals to be very triumphant, you need to understand the meticulous art direction of Link and Zelda's Wacky Adventures 2, and really the overall art philosophy of how can we get this to run at 15 shaky frames on our Japanese toaster? Clear win for Alan Wake 2. The metaphysical fondling of the gigapixels really toyed with the tanticless supernatural thematic themes, and as critics, we just love to see that. And as for the voice acting category, we don't even need to talk talk about it. We all already know that Megan Fox is mopping up here. Take a listen to what greatness sounds like. Because of- And that's enough of that. Thanks, honey. You did a great job. Now, best narrative, though? I mean, so many games this year have given me the honor of experiencing, absorbing, reflecting, and appreciating their triumphant themes over actually playing a video game. Shut up! I don't want to hear about playing the video game. This award show is critics first, fans, if if we have time. Let the grown-ups decide this one, okay, buddy? Ah, peep the mark. Remember that. But above all, there's obviously one game that ranks most triumphant above the rest of them. A game that took a stunning and brave direction to put one name on the cover and force you to play as someone else for a large portion of the rest of the game. The finesse to bore you for hours on end with nonsense narrative that keeps you desperately away from action as much as humanly possible, and that game is Alan Wake 2. The supernatural hippo Fat Albert Think Thoughts brought us a story we never even knew could happen in a video game. Next, Games for Impact. I haven't played any of these, so I'm gonna place my vote on Armored Core 6. I think their alternative idea to erase the carbon footprint of billions of people through global annihilation was the type of impactful and brave thinking this industry needs. Then there's Best Audio Effects, which I mean is Gollum. Easy. Before Gollum, nobody thought to just not include any sound effects at all. <sighs> Speaking of which, most anticipated upcoming game. Who doesn't love a good old-fashioned participation trophy? With that being said, Infinite Wealth. The minigames look surprisingly packed with ample amounts of content while teaching important lessons on business and finance. It's the first STEM game we've seen from AAA Gaming. If Jack the Bitcher was still here, God, he would he would have loved this game. Which leads us to best indie game. I'm glad Pizza Tower didn't make the cut. Don't even think about bitching to me in the comments. Remember... Mark. Us critics hate games with gameplay, which is why we will also be giving this award to Alan Wake. The character, not the game. He's an indie writer who knows how to tear down perceived perceptions and replace them with homonyms. Raw talent from the indie scene. Speaking of no gameplay though, time for best adaption. I am shocked and appalled that 2% Witcher, 98% Triumphant Broads yapping didn't even get a nomination. But in the lapse of them not being here, the second best is obviously Super Mario Brothers. Many people will say The Last of Us, but you're 
not tricking me, pal. <laughs> that movie already came out in 2013, you silly billy. Besides, you try turning this into a whole movie with a whole story. You know, it's not like Super Mario Brothers did that either, but it's a very colorful movie, and we like pretty colors. Now, do we have any Amazon Games employees here in the crowd to play? <laughs> Now for the next category, action and adventure. Now when you think of action, what do you think of? Now, I'll answer it for you. Walking. For 90% of the game's runtime, and who does action better than Alan Wake 2? Check this out. Walking, 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 eh? Huh? <laughs> nope, still walking. Although traversing the puzzle of being deaf was very triumphant. China, that's where the fun is at. China. That's where the fun is at. It really makes you question the Ludo narrative nipple twists, and as critics, we love to see a game challenge boundaries like that. Following that, best action game. Yes, they are two separate categories, and if Armored Core 6 loses this, I will lose my faith in gamers. But seeing as that is already gone, Ghost Runner 2 wins. Damn, you guys killed it with the sequel. Now please see yourselves out. We, we do have security here if you don't leave. Man, this is some bullshit. Next up, best RPG. This one is an easy get for me. It's the Bear. Starfield. Me and old honest retard are going down with the ship, pimp. Don't like it? You already know what I'm gonna say, you little fucking turncoat. Scram! Speaking of greatness, though, we have fighting games. Although Mortal Kombat should win for its battles with the ugly stick, a greater champion is present. I mean, the fighting mechanics in this game are fine, but the real fight? keeping away the sinful thoughts, brother. The winner is obvious. Congrats to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 on the win. That's SpongeBob is square in all the right places. And now it is time for the big Game of the Year award. Let's talk nominees. First, you have the 2005 Game of the Year coming back. Double dipping, going for that second Game of the Year award. You have Alan Wake 2 that- China, <laughs> that's where the fun is at. Spider-Man 2, whereas the Arkham game said, focus on playing as Batman the whole time and beating up poor people. Spider-Man lets you play as one. Baldur's Gate 3 for innovations and in letting you play as Will Smith getting murdered by a bear. Murdered. And then there's the Nintendo games. But the clear winner from my checkmark to your ears is ba 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 Starfield, baby. Oh, you're choking on my bullshit now. In a year full of 6, 17, 23, 4, the second 11-7s, Chad Howard came in to provide one of the only new IPs we've gotten this year and just marvel at it. Then marvel at this checkmark, bitch. Can you hear me now? And now here I leave you. With these words from Leviticus 1, Dracula Flow, this shit, shit. ain't nothing to me, man. Nothing. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir